Hello and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a stylized bridge here using Maya, ZBrush and then also Substance Painter for textures. So I'm going to keep it relatively uh, geometric so I'm going to use some primitive objects here to create it and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it out of uh, what you would call modular pieces. So I'm going to make it in pieces and then I'm going to use those pieces to uh, create the complete bridge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a railing piece um, a side piece which is going to be made of blocks and then a like a pillar uh, which is going to be used at the ends uh, to kind of hide where the uh, where the ends end pretty much and then I'm going to have a uh, the center which is going to be the planks uh, the wood planks that make up the bridge and I'm also going to reuse those to create a larger uh, structure, basically. So this is going to be my low poly. So as you can see, only a few pieces. I'm going to rename them. Then I'm going to duplicate and to create uh, the high poly model, which I'm going to use in ZBrush. It's just adding a few more details, a uh, few bevels, uh, just to make it easier to sculpt in ZBrush. This part can also be done, obviously, in ZBrush if you use the Mesh Modeler tool. Uh, but I usually like just to use it in Maya. For things like the rails, I'm going to duplicate them and uh, connect them so that uh, when I'm sculpting, it's more obvious where the seams are going to be and where things are going to be connecting. And I'm going to export that as my high poly. And then for my low poly, I'm just going to get rid of some of the geo that I'm not going to need. Like things like geometry that's inside, uh, that's not visible. And then I'm just going to UV these parts, which is going to be, uh, which are going to be the pieces that I'm going to use to create the complete bridge. Uh, one thing too is I model the pieces like the railing and the floor piece so that they snap to the, to the grid. So there are two blocks, so two grid pieces, and I'm going to also combine these. So that the seam bakes uh, more cleanly. Uh, if you don't have them like this, uh, there can be like ambient occlusion on the edges sometimes it bakes. And then I'm going to duplicate all the pieces to create uh, the actual bridge. This part can be done after you're done. Um, so in this case I was pretty confident that this was going to work so I didn't really need to worry too much about um, not knowing whether this was going to work or not so I already knew this was going to work, this was going to work fine uh, which is why I just duplicated the pieces and created the bridge even before I started to sculpt anything So like I said, I'm going to put the bridge together here. Uh, I just duplicated some pieces. And this is going to be essentially the final model. And like I said, this part can be done after you're done sculpting and texturing. Uh, but in this case, I just wanted to do it before that. And so that also I could just preview it in Substance Painter as well. Uh, one thing I did decide to do is I decided to make the, the light uh, or what is supposed to be the light uh, a little bit larger so I just deleted that and then I'm going to combine that piece and offset the UVs just so that there are no issues when I bake in Substance Painter and then I also uh, set my smoothing groups before exporting the low poly then obviously in ZBrush I just need to sculpt the main pieces and for that it's just some standard sculpting, mostly using the uh, trim dynamic for things like edges. And I'm using uh, symmetry uh, on the edges, so where the pieces connect with each other uh, for the railing and also for, for the floor piece. 
just so that there, there is no seam there once I bake the maps. Uh, so it doesn't matter, you don't have to have symmetry on when you're working in between the spots. Uh, but for the edges where the pieces connect, uh, that's where I enable symmetry just to make sure that once I bake the texture there is no uh, noticeable seam there. And then for everything else, it's just some standard sculpting, like I said, uh, mostly using the trim dynamic and using some of the orb uh, brushes as well, just to add more variation. I kept it relatively simple. So like I said, it's mostly using the Trim Dynamic brush uh, with some of the ore brushes for the um, for the flat areas. And for the wood planks uh, for the bridge, I, like I said, I enabled symmetry so that when I add the, where the planks separate, it's more noticeable where they actually connect. So I want to make sure that, you know, it's more predictable. And then for the middle path, for the middle parts, I disabled symmetry and I just did uh, different looking uh, strokes. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the high poly then i just exported it and replaced the original and in substance painter i'm going to bake obviously uh, with the high poly model and I'm, I'm baking by name so making sure that the names match And I'm also going to use the stylized material that I pretty much use mostly for all my stylized models. Uh, if you're interested in how that was made, uh, there's a link in the video description where you can just get access to the whole video uh, if you want to learn how, how to make this. Obviously, I do change some of the settings, mainly the ambient occlusion, and I duplicate some of the layers as well. On the trim pieces to be, I mean the railing pieces to be uh, made of metal, so there's a little bit of contrast between the stone, uh, the wood, and there's some met metallic surface there too, uh, with more shininess to it. I also wanted to add a little bit of color variation to the wood uh, itself. And I also made the wood a little bit more shiny, so that it uh, there's more light being reflected. And I also added an edge layer just to highlight the edges just a little bit more as well. And then the final thing I did was I added an emissive to the lights. And I painted that uh, manually pretty much. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this. As you can see, I, I put together a a whole bridge out of a few pieces so that's how you can make things from modular pieces all right so here's the render in mambo set toolbag and uh so if you like the video make sure you hit the like button if you're new to the channel uh don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in the next video do you see this environment right here i made this really quickly using maya zbrush substance painter and substance designer and unreal engine you too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in the reel, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment.
The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.